hello everyone. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Tom. I'm a professional baseball player, and this series is about my recovery from Tommy John surgery. If you're not new here, everything I just said is still true, but welcome back, and thank you for watching. So last time I was building my way back up into the very low 80s, and that is where we will start again today, repeating that velocity step to make sure that my body can handle it twice in a row, which I have had issues with more than once so far in this process. It seems like getting up to a certain velocity is working fine, but repeating it the next time I'm supposed to isn't always going as well. But this time it seems like we're alright, fortunately, and that means that next time we get to push it all the way up to 82 to 84 approaching the speeds I threw my sophomore year of college nearly a decade ago. It doesn't sound like much, these certainly aren't velocities that are going to get teams to consider signing me just yet, but they're a step along the way, and more importantly, they are at the very least numbers that I have seen on a radar gun when I was pitching and competing. It may not seem important, but it really reinforces the feeling that I am actually getting closer to being back. Throwing 68 miles an hour was an equally important step, but throwing a baseball 68 miles an hour is not something that I do in any context when I'm on the mound in games, unless I'm doing a very lackluster pickoff move. Throwing a fastball at 80 is also hopefully not something that I do in games anymore, but throwing sliders and changeups at 80 is. And so at least I can see some kind of correlation between what I'm doing currently and how I think of myself as a pitcher when I'm fully healthy. Anyway, 82 to 84, the next step up. I was excited going into this one, my arm felt really good, and apart from being a little hesitant on initially getting to 84, it went great. And once I got over that little hesitance, I blew straight through 84 and almost to 85, and my arm felt great afterwards. And I think that this is by far the most excited that I've been in the entire process so far. Now we just have to repeat it, take another little step up to 84, 86, and I think we'll be ready to start working off of the mound. But first things first, we have to repeat 82 to 84, and this is where we run into a little bit of an issue. As I've said already, repeating velo has been sort of an issue for me a few times so far, and this time is no different. For some reason, even though it felt like I was giving enough effort to get back up to 84, the ball didn't seem to want to come out of my hand any faster than 81 or 82. And I know that this is a small difference, but it was really frustrating in the moment. Looking back at this video now, it kind of just looks like I wasn't putting in enough effort, but at the time, it really felt like I was. I did manage to get one throw, my last one of the day, up to 84, and it felt fine, but my forearm was pretty sore the next day or two. I tried to take it as easy as possible for the next few days after that to make sure that everything was alright, but it definitely lowered the likelihood of my next high intent day being 84 to 86 by a significant amount. But then I realized that it didn't have to be. Part of my plan already was to sandbag the velocity I was at by a good amount when I started working off the mound. The outline return to throwing program that the Mets gave me said that my first mound work should be done at 80% of my max velocity. My fastest pitches ever are just under 95 miles per hour, which means that my first time off the mound, I'm supposed to throw about 76 miles an hour. So rather than push myself to try to get up to 84 to 86 when I'm not entirely sure I'm comfortable with it, I thought I would give myself a little bit of a break on velocity, but introduce the variable of the mound at that lower intensity to see how my arm would react. And overall, it felt fine, which is what I would hope at this intensity. My mechanics don't look particularly pretty, but I also didn't expect them to when I'm throwing 77. Now hopefully I can ramp up little by little on the mound and treat it as almost like a little bit of a deload as I make that transition. So the start of the next week, I try to continue this plan and get off the bump at a slightly higher intensity. And again, it felt fine, successfully bumped up the velocity a little, but afterwards it felt pretty bad again. And after talking to my physical therapist about this, we figured out that due to a convergence of a whole lot of factors, I had mildly strained my bicep and that's what I had been feeling after I threw. This is unfortunate, but it's also definitely not the worst thing that could have happened. Am I a bit disappointed? Absolutely. But I also think this is probably one of the biggest lessons that the rehab from Tommy John surgery has taught me so far, which is patience and how to deal with deviations from the plan that I have set out. I was obviously really excited to get off the mound and keep progressing in velo, especially since a ton of my mound work last offseason was in the 84 to 86 range, and it would have made me feel really confident about where I was at and how my rehab has been going and how it would go moving forward. Instead, I've ended up flying a little too close to the sun after things were going well, and now I need to spend a little bit of time rebuilding my wings, so to speak. That metaphor works really well here. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you all for watching as always, and I will see you next time.